Last week, we looked at the area of our lot and determined how to extrapolate our lot coverage. I voiced the importance of lot coverage to ensure that the size of our backyard suite does not conflict with our existing development. Hi everybody, I'm Elliot Sarba and welcome to another installment of the Anomaly blog and the third chapter of selecting the right lot. This is part one of setbacks and contextual parcels and how it affects the design of our backyard suite. It's at this point you should have a plan on what your living arrangement is going to be because it's going to be the focal point of your design. Once again, you can go on the website www.anomalydraftinganddesign.com where there's a detailed blog about real property reports and analyzing your site plan. If you have any questions, you can contact the office number or email to info at anomalydraftinganddesign.com. Before we start, I would like to remind you that this video is based on the rules outlined within the City of Calgary Land Use Bylaw. Therefore, those living in different municipalities will need to confirm their zoning rules for backyard suites and to see which rules are applicable to them. Alright, I think I'm only going to touch on the basics to try to keep things simple because I don't want to confuse you about the rules for other lots outside of common residential districts. So for now, let's try to understand what is a contextual parcel. Contextual parcels are parcels within existing districts or neighborhoods that have pre-existing requirements for new developments. These pre-existing requirements determine whether our new development is permitted or discretionary. If your development is considered as a permitted use, like a new home, then your development permit application will go through a more mild review process. However, if your development falls into a discretionary use, then you'll be subjected to a more rigorous review. Overwhelmingly, backyard suites succumb to a discretionary review due to the backyard suite being built outside of the zoning designation. Think of a discretionary review as a slow yes to a fast no because your application is circulated amongst development planners within multiple departments before it is advertised to the community to provide an opportunity for any potential appeals against it. So, if we were to submit for a discretionary use, how does this affect our design? What are the things we need to look for? To answer that, we need to establish our limitations. First, you need to know that an accessory residential building has rules that differ from the main dwelling. For a contextual parcel, this is what you need to know. The building heights. The height of the main dwelling will have precedence over the height of the backyard suite. If the existing main dwelling has a short building height, then the height of the suite is not to be higher than the roof of the main building. The building widths. The width of the main dwelling will have precedence over the width or overall size of the backyard suite. Your suite cannot be visible from the front street due to its width being wider than the main dwelling. The size of the suite. The area of the suite cannot be larger than 807 square feet. As mentioned earlier, we need to be careful that the area of the garage does not compromise the overall lot coverage. An additional suite is not permissible. If you have an existing basement suite, and you desire to build a backyard suite, you will be rejected. The city will not permit more than one additional suite to a main dwelling on a single parcel, even if the parcel is an RC2. Now that we have a general understanding of contextual parcels, and know that if we choose to build a backyard suite, we are subjected to a discretionary review. Remember, the more thought you put into your plan, the more it increases your chances for an approval. This concludes part one of this topic, and in part two, we're going to look at setbacks. In that video, I'll explain how setbacks influence this design. I think I lost what's left of my hair working out the details, but trust me, this was still a lot of fun. Once again, if you go on the website www.anomalydraftinganddesign.com, there is a very detailed blog about analyzing your site plan. If you have any questions, you can call the office number or email to info at anomalydraftinganddesign.com. Thank you for watching. See you next week.